Hello and welcome to my Facebook Live. I wanted to do this on my Kirsty Norton Yoga page, but it would appear that I have to do it here, which ironically fills me with more fear than doing it on my public page. So there we go. Anyway, this talk today is about Dharma and your life's purpose. I put on my other um, Kirsty Norton yoga page about people that uh, who wanted to find out about Dharma, what your life's purpose was, and if I got a certain amount of uh, feedback, then I would go ahead and do it. And I got something like over 700 people interested in this. So I listened to that, and thank you everybody that's joining me. And I've just got to read down the bottom. As you can see, techni technically I'm not very well set up for it, but the information is great. So it's about your life's purpose. It's about that calling that we all have to follow a certain path or connect to a certain way of being. And if you're really interested in life's purpose and Dharma and it is uh, something that appeals to you, then this book by Rod Stryker is one that I highly recommend. And in it, he defines Dharma as the longing for purpose, the drive to be and to become who you're meant to be. In simple terms, it is the drive to fulfill your p potential and the inherent drive of every being to thrive. So what I've got here is something that I share when I do workshops and retreats about Dharma and purpose. And it's 10 tips to discover what your Dharma is. And I find them really useful to come back to time and time again when I'm feeling that I've gone a little bit off my chosen path. And so if you've got a pen and paper handy, it can be quite good to take notes. All right, so 10 tips to discover your Dharma or your life's purpose. One is pay attention to synchronicity. So life is really good at guiding you when you're on the right path and following the right way of being for you. So pay attention to those doors that open Pay attention to the things that happen around you that seem to say yes, that guide you in the direction that you're going. And yes, it's like following your calling, which is actually point number two. Follow those callings. They may not make sense to you necessarily. I mean, I didn't grow up thinking I wanted to be a yoga teacher, but there was a deep, deep pull within me to follow that path. And whilst it was a path that has been full of interesting situations in terms of it's not necessarily earned me the most amount of money, it has been the most nourishing and fulfilling path. So I always came back to that calling and whilst trying to balance it out with other jobs that would give me um, the material needs, the money that I needed to be able to follow that path, it was just, it's been my calling, it has been my purpose and it's certainly evolving into the um, calling to help people find their own purpose as well. So, um, hey Jenny, nice to see you. Hi mate. Hi, hi Catherine. Hey Nikki. Um, so yeah, so follow those callings, those things that you feel deep within you that are guiding you and don't necessarily make sense to anyone else. That is one thing that I would say to really be careful of to make sure that you're fulfilling your destiny and not what other people's destiny is for you. So that can be quite a challenge in itself because you may want to conform. We've been brought up in a society where it's quite natural to conform. So perhaps your dharma is outside of the box, is outside where you thought you would be. And that can be a little bit unnerving at times, but just follow those callings. Uh, point number three, know when it's time to go, know when it's time to let go of something, whether it is a job, a career, a mindset, a habit, a person, a group of people. Uh, follow that voice that always comes up inside. It, you have all the information you need to know. Let me just quickly add that into this discussion, this talk really, that you always know. It, you have everything within you to know your calling, to know uh, what it is your path is. But what can happen is that we get a little bit scared, we stay in situations we perhaps shouldn't stay within and you will always have that little voice that says, no, this isn't working, I've got to go and it will get louder 
and louder and louder and louder and you can choose at which point you want to jump and let go and and get you know go but it will always be there so just take note of those little voices telling you when it's time to go and listen to that intuition um because your mind wants to fight these things interestingly enough the mind the ego wants to fight these things and continue on the fear and separation route uh, that it knows so well but really your spirit your soul knows best and just this is point number four be aware that none of this is linear it tends to go in a spiral everything goes in a spiral so sometimes we can feel like we're going 10 steps back but that calling is so deep that you just keep following it keep following it keep following it if i didn't follow my callings i wouldn't be sat here now talking to you about this sort of thing i wouldn't be sat here now having such had such a rich and diverse way of working and meeting people and knowing that i have made a difference to my own life and my own practices that would have allowed me to settle well in my home my body my temple whatever you want to call it and to be able to give the gift of um, that to hundreds of other people if not thousands um, so five make friends with the illogical it won't always make sense it doesn't work like that sometimes we're just like what and just be comfortable with that know that it doesn't always make sense your structure the society the family you've been brought up in might have given you ideas of a way of being of doing things and yet you've got this pull towards something completely different you know my dad always says to me what how did you get you know into this you know none of them are spiritual and yet he admires it and respects it now because he's seen it in action helping me through turbulent times and um how it's just steadfast within my being and he doesn't know where it's come from and um, you know if I'd have listened to my parents I would have probably stayed in a job in an office because that's where they felt that the, that was the only way to earn money um, so yeah make friends with the illogical if it does even if it doesn't make sense and you've got that deep calling just go with it okay so six have a practice that connects you this is vitally important to stay close to yourself. I cannot emphasize this enough how important it is to stay close to yourself when you are going through life, actually. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're trying to work out what your dharma is or whether you're parenting or whether you're working. Your own practice is vital on a daily basis. That may look like singing to you, that may look like drawing, it may be dancing, it might be yoga, it might be breath work, it might be meditation, whatever that thing is, you will know that is your practice when it connects you into your heart space, when it connects you into a way of being that you just feel uh, settled and at home. So vital, please keep your practices close. Don't use the adage, the excuse that I used for years, I don't have time. It's just not going to work in this day and age. You have to make the time. That's it. Okay, so point number seven, look at the people you admire around you. Choose three people you admire and note down what it is you admire about them. That will give you a clue on A, your purpose, your dharma, but B, qualities within them that you have within yourself that you want to emphasise and express it's a really useful tool, that one. Number eight, take it seriously, but be lighthearted, okay? So we that can be very good at getting serious when they're doing stuff. At least I can be, and I've seen others do it. When we are feeling, you know, we found our purpose, we've got our mission, we go, hey, warriors, whatever it is you're doing, and you go forward, and you forget to have fun, and you forget to be lighthearted, and really there's a great freedom in being lighthearted and letting... Uh, the weight of the world lift. We need to keep this balance happening, this um, lightness coming back into being, not just in the spiritual sense, but in the playful sense of energetics, balancing out the lightness, the heaviness, the doing stuff, but also being and having fun. One of my daily invitations is to find joy within the day. Sounds very bit woo woo perhaps and I don't care because it's a beautiful way of being you should give it a go if it feels uh, challenging to you to have something like that 
as a um, intention. Okay, so have courage to walk in mystery. This is a good one. It's very easy to fall into a fear-based thinking when we are following our path. We can come up with all sorts of excuses and reasons of why we can't do something and it will feel scary at times and it will, fit, will feel mysterious because frankly none of us really know the end result and it's not about the end result either, it's about that path that you're following. So within this, uh, go towards the things that create fear, that bring that sense of anxiety in when you're following your path and you can just nudge gently towards the edge of that fear. I'm not saying you have to jump right into the deep end of the pool. I'm saying that to nudge closer and closer allows you to expand and expand and expand. And those moments where you get completely swallowed up with fear and you just want to withdraw, just note it and see if next time you can go a little bit further into that um, place that gives you that fear because that is the mystery. That's where a lot of freedom and light and expansiveness lies. Okay, so um, within that, call in a higher level of trust, trust because really it's not just about you. All of this is co-creation. You really are connecting in with a higher purpose. So that courage doesn't have to just be instilled in you when you can expand into that um, higher purpose and know that there's a bigger vision for you. That can create a little bit more of a container for you to have that courage to walk in mystery. Okay, so point number 10, last point, allow breathing space. So it's not, my mum used to say this term, what's for you won't go by you. So as long as you are taking the time to connect, to listen, to take, inspired action towards your dreams, your dharma, your life purpose, you are always going to be on the right path. It's not necessarily something you're, you're going to catch, so it's not necessarily something that you um, need to leap towards and push and push and push. You can definitely take action towards it, but allow yourself some breathing space, some patience to let things happen to let the universe put things into place, to allow you to move into your path, your dharma, and know that patience is a necessity and know that you have absolutely everything you need within you to create and move along your path. Um, I'm gonna look at the questions here to see if anybody's got anything that I can answer on Dharma, you'll have to uh, excuse the wobbliness. Like I said, I'm not very techy. Okay, if you've got any questions on Dharma, please feel free to ask them. Otherwise, I'm going to just um, read something that came from a book that was loaned to me today, Nikita Stallone, you might recognize it. And this talks about the law of action. The law of action means that an individual must engage in activities that support thoughts, dreams, emotions and words. A commitment must be made first. And then this step will support the basic principle of the law of action. The commitment is then turned into a plan and the plan is then supported by passion. And then the tasks need to be completed. So really that is about Dharma and I would invite you to close your eyes now and just take a deep breath and if you feel comfortable to place one hand on your stomach one hand on your heart you can do that and then I'd just like you to take a deep breath in and then sigh it all out And then from this heart space, keep breathing and expanding into this area. Sighing if you need to, to let go of any residual tension, any tightness.
And then ask yourself, what is the change that you so deeply want to see in this world? And use this contemplation to perhaps journal. But from this place of heart connection, just dive into the answers that come up as you ask yourself, what is the change that you so deeply want to see in this world? Because the answer to this will give you an important um, clue to your purpose, to your dharma. Take another deep breath in. And use this contemplation to carry on this self-inquiry to carry on with this discovering your life purpose, your dharma. Thank you for watching. If you've got questions for me, feel free to add them below, whether you're watching live now or joining later. And thank you for joining me for my dharma textbook live.